555, five, five, and you'll see that this dealer key at 555 five, five was perfect. Dealer key at 555, five, five. price came into this area. We already had a reason why we were closing out positions there. We got a profit take and boom, right up to the top edge. What happened at the top edge? We got a dealer's key with an M attached to it at 615. See those blue areas? Those blue lines? That is 615. Sell side, sell side at 615. What happens when the, the level at 555 goes offered? When the level at 555 goes offered, we then get a beautiful sell away from it at the, that point right there. And then what happens? We move to the next dealer key at 497. What happened at 497, I hear you say, well, what happened at 497 is we got a profit take bounce right here. What happened when the price went back below 497? We're heading towards 400 with an M level. What happened just a few seconds ago? We just traded 400 with an M level. The dealer keys are unbelievable in terms of trade outcomes. If you pay attention to them, along with your narrative in terms of your order flow, along with your narrative in terms of your values, your storylines, the, th the other things that are building, the dealer keys are fundamentally significant trade levels. So you can see, for example, that sell trade that we've just been talking about off the 56, you can see what's happened to that trade since. We've went clean through all of those trades. You can see that the price that we've hit into is the dealer's key at 17,400. Do you see it? So you're already aware of that price. You're already aware that this is massively significant. Well, outside of the fact that 17,400 is always going to be significant, regardless of anything else that happens. We know that this is always going to be a great place to book your monies. And obviously, we've just went from 600 to 400, guys. That happens to be a $4,000 per contract sell side profit on the 56 short sell. So when I shouted to everybody this afternoon, and I think a few guys were a little bit surprised at this, you know, you know, we had the conversation with Theo, I think it was earlier on about this trade. And I says, look, this looks like a, a short because of bonds. How good did it turn out? I know hindsight's easy to talk about, but this wasn't hindsight, was it? This wasn't hindsight. This was real time. This was a conversation we had this morning in the London session. This isn't something that we make up after the trade's already visible, after the chart's already known. We had this conversation today. Earlier on, when I was talking about bonds and I said, there's a problem with this. There's a real problem with this. The volatility thinks it's kind of bullish, but the bonds thinks it's really bearish. And obviously when the bond thinks it's really bearish, my own leaning on that is usually because of the bonds. As you know, because after Fed Day, the bonds are more important to me than anything else. But when we then tie it in with the other pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, when we tie that storyline in with the skews, when we tie that storyline in with the dealer's keys, we start thinking to ourselves, wow, this is just ridiculous. This is just crazy stuff going on in here. And I'm still sell side bonds, still sell side bonds. The twos fives has not caught up yet. So I sold some off the 20. I don't know if anybody decided they fancied a bit of pullback on that trade. It was a nice change of behavior level. Uh, there's still a lot of value on the, ups, uh, on the upside of the curve, but uh, there's the bond as it stands at the moment. There's still a lot of upside on this curve. As I said to you guys earlier, I think we could be potentially aiming for a 118.16 level. So if I can sell 120s, I'm going to take another shot at this to see if I can at least get 19s offered. And if the curve keeps going the way it is, if the curve keeps going, and I can adjust if it doesn't, but if the curve keeps going the way it is, there's no reason why I can't see 119 offered being a real thing. 
you know. So I think this has been incredible. I think this has been an incredible trade because this trade, this trade has led me to everything I've known about equities today. This massive bubble that we've had in here, the massive bubble we had in here yesterday for the big short, the massive bubble we had in here for the big short. There was no bubble here for the long trade. So it just became another procession of selling top edges again until we get that sale working for us. I think it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant bit of business. And obviously that's kept us honest and right about what's happening in gold. We've made a fortune on that short sale in gold. Uh, the last trade was at 12s. We traded a low print eventually of about 96s massive profits even this afternoon in gold and that's been uh, just a, a brilliant bit of business as well so it's been just great right across the board